MacArthur, and I'm a specialist in hip and knee reconstruction and hip preservation at Washington Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Our goal in establishing the Center for Hip Preservation was to provide comprehensive care for adults and adolescents with hip pain by bringing together specialists and experts uh, in a variety of fields. So whether it's a problem that is best treated with physical therapy and training uh, or a problem that requires surgery, whether that surgery be hip arthroscopy, other hip preservation techniques, or hip replacement, we have the specialists to provide the expertise needed to care for that patient. Hip preservation is a relatively uh, recent field uh, or subspecialty in the field of orthopedics, uh, which focuses on the care of, of the hip uh, with structural abnormalities um, that can induce pain and early degenerative change. And it's, it's really uh, grown in recent years because of an increase and an improvement in our understanding of the structural problems in the hip that can result in pain with motion or at rest um, and can also result in progressive damage to the structures within and around the joint. Structural hip disease basically defines the, uh, the condition where the mechanical environment of the hip is abnormal. So the, the hip is a ball and socket joint and ideally the hip should be in, in a perfect balance between freedom of motion and stability. And if that balance is disrupted in one direction or the other, it can result in problems. When a bone is cut and moved, it's referred to as an osteotomy. And there are two types of osteotomies that may be employed in the treatment of structural hip disease, particularly in more severe variants of, of uh, the condition. And those are a femoral osteotomy, which is basically cutting and moving the femur or thigh bone, which adjusts the position of the ball, or a pelvic or acetabular osteotomy. Acetabulum is the anatomic word for the socket. The pelvic osteotomy is geared towards adjusting the position of the socket relative to the head ball. That's particularly useful in a patient with dysplasia in a shallow socket. So if the head ball is uncovered and you correct the socket and bring it more on top of the head ball, you're going to improve the coverage, you improve the mechanics in the hip joint, and that's the most effective treatment for a patient with symptomatic and severe hip dysplasia. My name is Andy Wolf and I'm a, a hip arthroscopy and hip preservation surgeon. So I do surgery on people who have hip problems that aren't arthritis. So typically that is younger patients with athletic hip injuries or hip injuries uh, that uh, don't need hip replacements. The labrum is a ring of cartilage that goes around the rim of the hip socket. So if we think of the hip, uh, a simplified version of the hip as being a ball that fits into a socket, the labrum is a gasket seal that goes around the rim of the socket and it's there to stabilize the hip and to protect the hip uh, and the other cartilage in the hip. When it tears, it sometimes causes pain uh, and then that we treat that, uh, we can treat that with arthroscopic surgery. We go in with a little camera through a little incision on the side of the hip and there's another little incision and we'll put what's called a suture anchor into the rim of the hip socket. There, it's a little anchor that goes into the bone. The suture is passed through the labrum and, tie, and then I tie it and it holds it back to the bone. Sometimes the labrum is, is too destroyed and in which case uh, we, what we'll do is we'll take it out and we'll do what's called a labral reconstruction. And I do a lot of those and have had really good success with that, with that procedure uh, when, there's, when the labrum is not able to be repaired. The reason we do that is because we know that if you take the labrum out and leave it out, that patients don't often do well or they have a high chance of failing. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll take it out and put a gra we'll make a graft uh, and put it in instead of repairing your own labrum. Uh, we'll, re we'll 
we'll reconstruct it. And we, we basically fix that the same way we would a labral repair. Um, you end up, typically you end up with an, one extra small incision uh, and surgery takes a little bit longer, but we recover those, we rehab and recover those patients the same way and actually have the same, uh, if not better results actually sometimes with those patients. So postoperatively, patients typically, typically the vast majority of the time can go home the same day. Um, they have to have general anesthesia, so you have to recover from that, uh, and that takes an hour or two, and then you can go home. The pain afterwards usually isn't too bad. Most people need pain medicine for a day or two, um, but then very quickly or start getting back into normal uh, everyday life. Uh, my name is Anthony S. Unger. I'm a partner in uh, Washington's uh, Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. And my specialty is uh, reconstructive surgery. Adult reconstructive surgery consists of primarily uh, replacement and reconstruction of uh, arthritic hip and knee uh, problems. Well, the anterior hip replacement is uh, going through the front of the hip where the muscles are not damaged at all. They're spread apart and there's no cutting of muscles and there's no damage to any nerves at all around the hip. The standard operation, which has been around for a long time, probably 50, 60 years, goes through a big muscle in the back of the hip. The problem with it is that occasionally people can sometimes uh, get damage to those muscles and the hip sometimes will come out after surgery. It's not a high chance of uh, what we call dislocation, but it does obviously sometimes result in uh, a return to the operating room. So the anterior hip replacement, which if you look at it historically, has been around quite a number of years, but has been popular over the last 10 to 15 years in the United States. The anterior hip replacement has uh, essentially revolutionized the world of hip replacement surgery. Patients can now have surgery on their hip and go home even uh, occasionally the same day of surgery. Uh, the sh it has shortened the amount of time in the hospital. It's a minimal invasive procedure. Uh, patients get up and walk faster, they uh, return to work faster. Uh, at the end of the day, the outcomes are wonderful, whether you go with the standard approach or with the anterior approach, but it really speeds up the process and it really uh, lessens the burden on the patients in terms of what they have to go through with surgery. Outpatient hip replacement surgery is, again, a very big advance. and It allows patients to leave in the same day. Most of those patients are usually under 65. They're usually fairly healthy. Uh, they're usually thin, uh, not too muscular, uh, and they have to be motivated. They have to want to go home and they have to feel that there's some advantages to leaving uh, an outpatient center and going home and not being in a hospital. I personally think it's a great advance in terms of surgery. Well, we have developed, I have developed a set of instruments which allow uh, uh, adequate uh, retraction or uh, pushing away of the soft tissues to allow proper placement of the implants. In addition, there are some specialized tables that we have at our hospital which allow the surgeon to perform these uh, surgeries uh, satisfactorily. We also use robots occasionally and what we call navigation, which is a way of implanting the implants in a more precise uh, position. So there's a lot of technology with anterior hip replacement surgery that's improving the results. Um, the Outpatient anterior hip replacement uh, patients sometimes will uh, be leaving, obviously leaving the hospital the same day or leaving the outpatient center on the same day. They're up and walking immediately. They go up and step downstairs immediately. Uh, most of the time they're driving a car within seven to 10 days back to work in two weeks, sometimes shorter than that. I've had some patients go back to work in four or five days. Uh, they're playing a little bit of uh, sports, I guess at four to six weeks, riding a bike. Uh, working out in the gym, and full recovery sometimes three months, um, sometimes occasionally six months, but it's, it's probably about 50 percent faster. So what you've seen at Washington Orthopedics is we have expertise in many areas of hip surgery, from uh, sports medicine uh, injuries, arthroscopic surgery, hip preservation techniques, uh, to the continuum of uh, joint replacements. All of our hip specialists are world uh, renowned and nationally known, uh, speak at many conferences, and I think if you have a hip problem uh, and you come to Washington Orthopedics, I am confident that you will get expert care.